right, Inkology, course number one. Over here we have our ink rack. As you can see, they're organized according to color by these little tags right here. Now you may be asking yourself, why do we have so many of the same color of ink? Great question, listener. Here's the reason. Because different types of ink interact with different types of fabric. And we want to choose the ink that's going to perfectly match our fabric. So come on in close and you can take a look at a few of the different whites that we have. So number one white that we have over here on the left is called Epic Performance Low Cure White, LC White. LC stands for low cure as I already uh, said. And this is an ink that we're going to uh, use directly on 100% polyester garments. Since it's a low cure, it's going to help the, the dye from the polyester garment not to bleed in. Now these are all plastic inks, they're called plastisol. Polyester is also a plastic, that's a type of fabric. Since they're made out of the same substance, the two things like to share their dye and their properties with each other. So let's say worst case scenario, I'm printing on a red polyester shirt. They're known for bleeding very, very bad into garments, which means that over time, the red dye from the shirt will leach into the white ink. If I print with a standard cotton white ink, then that dye from the red shirt is going to bleed into this ink over time, and my customer is going to end up with a pink print on their garment instead of a nice bright white print. It also exacerbates the issue. The hotter the garment gets, the more likely it is for the dye to move into the ink. So this, a standard ink, will cure at 320 degrees. A low cure ink cures at about 285. So if I can keep the temperature down on my garment, I make it less likely that I'm going to bleed. Now, let's say that we have an interesting print situation. I need to print a on a black 100% polyester shirt, and it's going to be white, it's going to be a red print, and no, let's say it's a red polyester shirt, so I'm gonna do uh, white, black, and yellow on a red polyester shirt. Now, of course, I'm gonna use my polyester white as an underbase for the yellow. The black, I'm gonna say, hmm, well, black is a lot darker of a color than red, so I don't have to worry about it bleeding. That's totally correct. However, since you're printing with a low cure white, if I set my cure temperature in the oven to 285 degrees, I'll cure my white, no problem. But I will not cure my black. At, or at 280 degrees. So whenever uh, my customer puts it in the wash, all the black will wash right out of the garment. So even if I'm not concerned about it bleeding, I have to match my low cure colors to other low cure colors. That way I can make sure that everything cures correctly. So if I was doing that, I would have to print with a low cure white, a low cure yellow, and a low cure red. Otherwise, I have to jack it all the way up to the normal temperature of 320 degrees to make sure that everything cures correctly. There's also a middle product. So we've talked about the low cure for polyester. We've talked about the regular for cotton. And we've talked, and now we're going to talk about kind of the middle ground. So a lot of our garments are 50% polyester or 40% polyester. That's when we use this 50-50 blend ink. This is the International Coatings Cool White. This has a flexible temperature range, which means that it can be cured on the lower end, but it's also very comfortable to cure at the normal 320 degrees. Also, this has a low bleed property. So as long as it's not 100% polyester, this International Coatings Cool White will have no problem printing on a 50-50 blend. Now you might be asking yourself, why not just print with the polyester ink all the time? That way you can make sure that nothing bleeds ever. That's also a great question. The answer is because this is very expensive ink and because it's quite difficult to work with. The more low bleed and low cure properties that an ink has, the more it seems to be very, very gummy and difficult to print. So we're only gonna print with these stiffer inks if we have to. Cotton ink prints like a breeze and it's very, very cheap. So we'll use it anytime we can. So coming on to colored inks. We have all different colors and they can be mixed. Different, any of these inks can be mixed with any of the other inks to achieve a thing. The only thing you have to 
kind of keep an eye on is if you're trying to make a low cure ink, you need to use low cure inks to mix it. I can't mix a regular with a low cure ink and expect for it to still cure at a low temperature. If I mix the regular, then I'm probably gonna have to cure it at the full temperature. So you'll see that I have a low cure black or a low cure black here and a regular black. Any black is going to print very easily. And since it's the darkest color with all of the saturation, you'll be able to easily get good coverage with a black with no underbase on any color. The same could not be said for this red. Red comes in all different colors. We've got bright reds and dark reds and blood reds and fire reds and all that sort of thing. But one common characteristic of all bright colors like a red is that when printed on a dark garment, they will not show up very well. They'll be very muddy, they'll be very gray, unless you give a good underbase. So an underbase, we would print a white first, followed by the color, and that will help the color to be very, very uh, visible. Plastisol ink is uh, made out of a liquid plastic, and it will not dry unless it's heated to the temperature that I talked about before. So the curing temperature of most Plastisol inks is 320 degrees. It will gel, meaning that it will get kind of dry at about 280 degrees, even with a regular cure. With a low cure ink, it will gel at more like 250 to 260 degrees. But it will never dry of its own. So this ink here that's been sitting on this lid is just as wet as the day that it was put there, perhaps two years ago or something like that. Since it will never dry, we have to be very, very cautious about how we use these inks. It's extremely easy to get it on your elbow, to brush it while you're walking past, or the back of your hand, and before too long, you've got ink all over the shop. So when I handle the inks, you will notice that I will never scoop from the bottom of the lid and grab it like this. Instead, I grab this puncher on the top of the lid and remove it like this. And then I get by the handle and the bottom of the bucket when I pick it up. And that will ensure that I don't get ink on my hands when I'm handling the ink. I come away, hopefully ink free. Now, of course, it's never a guarantee that it'll be ink free. So I always check my hands front and back before I proceed on to another task. When I'm finished with the ink, we'll always put it back in the spot that it goes so it's easy to find. Now, one more thing on these inks. They're extremely viscous meaning that they're very, very thick, they're not runny. And so when I'm scooping them out, I'll use our standard little scooper like this, and it's pretty flexible. It bends pretty well. So if I just dig into a really hard viscous ink like this 50-50 or like this performance white, and I just dig in and try to scoop it out, I'm gonna snap this handle right away. It's just gonna happen. So I need to be cautious about how I scoop the inks. Usually what I will do, I'm gonna come over here, is I will dig into the ink with the strong edge, right? I'm moving this way and I will cut it up. And as I'm moving with the ink, it loosens up. Okay, it's usually very stiff at first and then as I'm working with it, it loosens up. Then I can take a scoop and you can see that it's actually becoming quite runny. If I don't do that, if I just dig in straight and try to yank out a scoop, I'm probably gonna snap the handle on this. So we try to be cautious about that.